Hey, thanks for stopping by another episode of This Month in Food. Chef Billy Parisi here, and what I'm gonna do is take you through everything that's trending in my life around food, restaurants, Instagrammers, YouTubers, bloggers, you name it. Let's get it. So hopefully you're having fun with me doing this once a month. You guys requested that I do stuff like this. I'm really enjoying it. I love this type of stuff. I love radio. Used to do a lot more of it. It's like you just show up in pajamas and talk. Not that I'm wearing pajamas, but it's super chill. You can say things like, um, and yeah, and okay. But, uh, I mean, it's just awesome. In any event, happy new year. Obviously it's 2020. It's January. And... I want to talk about a few New Year's resolutions, not just for me, but maybe they can apply to you as well. Starting off with this, trying some new foods. I try to do this for myself as well. I mean, yes, I've eaten probably more than the average person as it comes to like, I don't know, unique types of foods, but maybe explore something new yourself. Try a cocktail grapefruit, try some kohlrabi, try things that you haven't had before. I mean, who knows? There's a whole world of food out there that's delicious that you haven't even had yet. So be a little bit adventurous. Try some new stuff. Next, I have, and it's probably maybe more for me than it is you guys, but getting some exercise. I've gained a few LBs in the last few months. All that Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year. I mean, you know, it just piles on and adds on and... I need to lose about five to 10. So I need to figure out how to get some exercise. One of my good buddies, Mark Z kind of does these monthly challenges of up downs and then getting a certain amount of exercise in a day combined with pushups. And I need to hop on there. I'm just, I got to do something. I'm sorry. I'm like blown away that I still have not worked out in over a year. <sighs> Okay, next one, I put this on my New Year's list every single year, and it's don't be a hack. And this relates to, I mean, not just um, like cooking, but also video production. It's taking the time, doing that due diligence to research recipes that maybe I'm not familiar with, doing the technique the right way, not hacking through it. And there have been some times even this year that I'm like, man, even after I did it, I wish I wouldn't have done it that way. I wish I would have did it another way, but a little too late now. But I always try to make sure I can get things as good as they possibly can um, based on the way they were supposed to be created. And this also, like I said, applies to video production for me as well. Just making sure all my shots are nice and clean. The audio sounds good, blah, 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 blah. All right. Lastly, it's patience. Um, this goes from waiting for bread to rise to treating my daughter with all the love and the respect they deserve and uh, not honking five to 10 times on the way home because, well, I live in Chicago and traffic. Okay, moving on. This next section is usually wrapped around my favorite new current chef. And please know that I'm humbly, humbly doing this, but I actually had quite a few requests of uh, folks coming in that said, hey man, tell me a little bit about your story because I like your recipe videos, I like your recipes and blog. But I don't really know that much about you and how you got your start. So I'm going to try to give you the five-minute version as fast as I possibly can. So I always say food started in my life well before I was born. My grandparents were from Sicily, um, always cooking, always food around. Not that they were some amazing chefs, but always food around. And my dad even met my mom in a restaurant. He was a cook. She was a waitress in Detroit. And I just found out that they were actually going to maybe open a restaurant at some point and decided to open hair salons. Um, yeah. And my mom was a beautician. So obviously they didn't do the restaurant world, but I got involved at the age of 13. When I was in St. Louis, a good buddy of my dad's owned a restaurant and he asked if I would dishwash. And I was like, man, of course, make money when I'm 13. I thought that was cool. And I immediately had that Anthony Bourdain moment in Kitchen Confidential where he's looking up to these chefs and like, man, these guys are my heroes. I mean, I just idolize these guys in the kitchen. And I always had this sort of artistic background to myself, and I definitely get that from my mom. And noticing the food that they were like putting on the plate, I was like, man, that is, that is art. And when I was 15 years old, uh, I had moved up to kind of the salad and uh, garde manger station, if you will. And I kept thinking, 
I, I want to go to culinary school. And it's funny, like telling my friends all that in high school as a sophomore, I'm like, I'm going to go to culinary school. They're like, what the heck is that? So um, we're just going down street to the university. So uh, I got really heavily involved in food, worked at a couple of different places in high school, then went out to Arizona to Scottsdale Culinary Institute, got my culinary degree, moved back to St. Louis. Uh, I worked three to four years professionally in the restaurant world uh, as a sous chef, um, as an executive chef, but got really burnt out crispy, not just um, like I didn't physically get burned, but uh, just experienced um, the full force and the weight of working in the restaurant industry from hours, uh, emotionally, socially. It just really warmed me. So I went back to school at the University of Missouri, got a degree in uh, communications with an emphasis in video production. And uh, really, I worked at a restaurant while I was there as well. And it was the best chef I ever worked for. It's so funny. I always say, man, if I would have found you before I came back to school, maybe I would still be in his name, Chef Daniel Pliska. I know I talk about him. Uh, he's just an awesome chef, great friend, uh, just a really great guy. But I kept praying as soon as I graduated, like, God, please don't let me get involved with food. I want to do video production. And then literally within a few months of graduating, there I was taking pictures and video of food. So I sort of worked my way through the internet digital stuff. I started a website called fixmyrecipe.com uh, with a good buddy of mine. Unfortunately, we launched it in the middle of the recession, so it didn't last. And I had a couple little stints at other places. Um, and then kind of just ventured out and started my own thing about five, six years ago. And here I am today. Uh, I guess uh, the closest I came to being on television, I had a couple close um, opportunities with Food Network. I was an alternate on Food Network Star 6. I missed it by one spot. Um, and then I had a couple shows that got pitched there that went really far and almost got on air, but didn't quite make it. I'm kind of glad as a as a dad now, I don't want to be traveling. Um, love what I'm doing. I have the studio, BPMVC Studios in Chicago on the northwest side. Love what I'm doing. So that's what I do now. That's what you see me doing when I post all these recipes. I'm here making food for you all. So thanks for watching. All right, enough about me. Let's get into one of my favorite restaurants of the past month. It's called Izzy's Arcade Bar. And it's in, I think, Niles or Des Plaines, which is the northwest uh in the burbs of Chicago, dude, I went there. Uh, amazing. If you're an eighties or nineties kid, you have to go here. It's an arcade. It's everything you played as a kid, paper boy, Contra, all the mortal combats. I mean, I was in heaven, super solid beer list, decent bar food, but the atmosphere is amazing. Holy smokes. I know this is less about the food, more about the ambiance there. You will love it. Go. It's awesome. All right. Food trends. You know, I just did a cool podcast, uh, Eat Blog Talk, and I talked a little bit about food trends. And one of the things in there that I hit, uh, hit on were cooking techniques. And I, I'm starting to see younger folks, uh, I'm in my 30s, so even younger than me, take an interest in cooking and want to understand how to cook. Not necessarily just the recipes, but how to do it. And I don't know if that's because it's like blue plate or home chef where you're forced to cook, even though the ingredients are kind of already um, weighed out and measured. But I love this. I cannot tell you how much I love this. People always ask me, what kind of pots and pans or knife should I use? And I'm just like, if you just learn how to cook, you could cook on a rock as long as it's hot enough. And I can't agree with that more. It's just about those kind of fundamental techniques how to do things, and then your creativity kind of goes from there. It's like, once you learn how to make a vinaigrette, you can make any vinaigrette. Once you learn how to saute, you can saute anything. Once you learn how to grill, you can grill anything. I mean, and then you just add your creativity on top of that, and then you'll start creating some masterpieces at home. So if you follow me for a while, you know I'm all about those cooking techniques, kind of fundamental basics of cookery, teaching you those things while applying it to recipes so that you can make anything homemade from scratch. I know you heard me say it a million times, but I love this, and I'm starting to see it more and more. Keep it coming, you guys. Love it. Let's talk about some food news. I thought this was interesting and kind of funny. I don't know. Maybe it's not funny. It's coming out of France where there's a, a chef, Marc Verat. I hope I'm saying that right. V-E-Y-R-A-T. Um, he lost a lawsuit because he had filed one against Michelin, which uh, you might hear one-star, two-star, three-star Michelin star restaurants. Michelin. Um, three stars, just so you know, is the highest that you can get in the restaurant industry. And 
He was accused by using cheddar cheese in one of his dishes. Dang. You can lose a star by using cheddar cheese. Holy smokes. Remind me never to call the Michelin folks. Um, but any event, he lost his, his lawsuit. Uh, they did not give him his star back. And I can imagine that must just be killing him. Uh, and just for the record, he says he didn't use cheddar cheese at all. But hopefully he can get it back. I'm sure, like I said, it's devastating. I don't know. I thought that was really interesting news. That lawsuit just came about a few days ago. Um, okay, five books to check out. I like to do this every single month. Jubilee by Tony Tipton Martin. I haven't got my hands on this, but the reviews are fantastic. It's 200 years of African-American cooking with a whole load of references and history and everything that comes uh, with that culture. I need to check this out because there's such a foundational um, history of African-American food in the United States. In fact, if I really had to think about it, and I say this often, if you looked at American cuisine, it would mostly be inspired by African-American culture um, because we brought, you know, Italians, Irish, Western Europeans, they brought their food culture here, but um, they started a foundation here based on what they could locally grow here. Um, it's just... It seems like a really awesome book. I don't want to get too controversial on anyone get mad at me for saying anything. So, sorry. Next, uh, Cheers to the Publican by Chef Paul Kahan. He is just tearing up Chicago. He's done so many cool restaurants here. Love the Publican. Fantastic restaurant. It's in the Fulton Market area. If you are here in Chicago, go. His cookbook is money. Next, The Chef and the Slow Cooker by Hugh Atkinson. Um, what else do you need to say? slow cooking and this is a perfect time of year for it next wa shoku by elizabeth ando this is an awesome modern and ancient japanese recipe cookbook um and that you'll find all of these types of cuisines all throughout uh japan or all of these types of techniques and, and recipes rather great cookbook last but not least tacos by alex dupak and jordana rothman i really apologize if i'm saying anyone's names incorrectly this is all about the art of making homemade authentic tacos from homemade tortillas to salsas to proteins for tacos awesome right love it okay show to watch i know i say this to everyone that i come in personal contact with you but chef's table it's on netflix it's all about some of the top chefs all around the world their culinary journey the restaurants they work at, their story, and it's really a live look at what goes down in the restaurant industry and how hard it is to keep up on trends with the hours, um, the money that you make or don't make, but it's just an awesome show. Cannot recommend it enough. One new blogger to follow, Jen from twocupsflower.com. She has a beautiful blog, all focused around baking, and I think maybe I just like her because she tried one of my bread recipes and posted about it, but uh, to give her full credit, has nothing to do with my bread. Uh, her blog is awesome. She won the Savor Readers, Savor Readers Choice Blog Award in 2018 and then won Best Photography Savor Award in 2019. Beautiful, beautiful baking blog. Be sure to check it out. Next one YouTube channel to follow. I got to give a shout out to my boy Stephen Casado of Not Another Cooking Show. The dude is awesome. I mean, his personality is fantastic on camera. He's a New Yorker, um, just I don't know. He's just, he's just awesome. I don't know what else to say. Love his cooking style, super approachable. Uh, and if you're, if you're kind of like the home foodie looking to hone their skills, he has the channel for you, has a great following, very loyal, awesome pastas, um, just even typical homemade dishes like how to scramble eggs. Great, great YouTube channel. Check him out. And then one Instagram to follow, Brian Ford of Artisan Brian. Man, I just want to lick my phone every time I go to his Instagram feed. It's all breads and baked goods, and golly, it looks amazing and gorgeous. I know it tastes good, so give him a follow, Artisan Brian, and then that's it. You guys, that's all I've got. Um, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Check out this video because you know it's going to be an amazing, delicious recipe, and I'll see you next month.